If anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Such a little statement with a world of implication. Paul is delivering to the Galatians a very severe warning. And what is he warning against? Pride. Pride. And I'm going to tell you, you study the Bible, you can start combing through the scriptures, and what you will find is that this sin, this particular sin, it's woven throughout the tapestry of the word. Look at the wisest man that ever lived, second to Yeshua, King Solomon, for whom people across the globe had come just to hear his wisdom. I challenge you, go read his book of Proverbs. What consumed him? Proverb after proverb after proverb, the wisest man on the earth is talking about pride. That is an amazing, that is an astounding thing. And the reason is, is he marveled at how sneaky and how clever this one little sin was. Very sneaky. And I'm going to tell you, this is a sin that has taken out many of righteous men. So seductively. And this is a sin that every single person in this room is confronted with. This is a sin that I can tell you I have seen destroy friendships. It has destroyed uh, marriages, families. I've seen it destroy communities. Unbelievable path of destruction that this one little sin leaves. So today we are going to spend a little bit of time on this issue. And we're really going to draw out the severity here of Paul's concern because you, again, you need to feel the weight of it. Paul is amazing. He makes these little statements with, with world, uh, the profound implications. Just these little statements. We want to give this some teeth as so you can feel it. And what I, what I want to do is I want to take you to Second Chronicles 26. And we're going to read about a story of a king of Judah. A king by the name of Uzziah. Okay? Or Uzziahu in, in, in the Hebrew. And this is what we read. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became Melech, and he reigned 52 years in Yerushalayim. His mother's name was Jechaliah or Yechaliah in Hebrew of Yerushalayim. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. According to all that his father Amaziah had done, verse 5, he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. The first thing I want you to recognize is Uzziah, he was a man of God. He walked with God. God walked with him. God prospered him. He was the king of Jerusalem, the king of, of Yehuda. Then Uzziah prepared for them for the entire army, shields, spears, helmets, body armor, bows, slings to cast stones. And he made devices in Yerushalayim invented by skillful men to be on the towers in the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. Then we read this. So his fame spread far and wide, for he was marvelously helped till he became strong. Where did he get the strength? It was by the living God. Where did he get that strength? And now we start to see his fame. It can't begin when the Lord is with you in such a mighty way, the world's going to know it. This is what we read in verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. When he had all that, I mean, God with him, it is the strength of God who gave him power who gave him fame and and, and and so all of a sudden you know Uzziah he starts tasting the glory he tastes the glory the honor the fame the strength the power and instead of falling to his knees and thanking the Lord God for being with him he lets it go into his heart he starts looking at himself starts to sink in pride is so sneaky it starts to do this, and it feels so good. He becomes intoxicated with the feeling. Now, I got to tell you something. You, you can confess it or not confess it. That's between you and the Lord. But the reality is, is your flesh every single day wants glory. It wants honor. Your flesh wants to be worshiped. 
When people hold you up and respect you, it feels so good. It's intoxicating. This is one of those sins you're like, man, is this nasty. It comes in. I mean, this is our entire society is built to get you to embrace pride. Entire society built for this one thing, the glory of men. We desire it. It's inherent in our flesh. You think of Hollywood and all the stars that are out there. The whole point of that is to look at me, look at me, I'm in the spotlight. Rock stars and bands and, and everyone's dream is you're sitting in the garage fantasizing that you're gonna be on a stage in front of thousands so they can adore you, so that they can lift their hands and they can raise their hands in honor of what you're doing is absolutely amazing. I can remember one of the first real rock shows I went to. Now I grew up in a conservative Christian home and then walked away from the Lord. So I hadn't been exposed to all that. And I remember the first rock show I went to, it was, it was, you know, of course in my fleshly body, it was so amazing and awesome. But I recognized something unusual. I was like, wow, I'm seeing everybody's hands up. They're just, yeah, this is awesome. And I said, man, this is, this looks like church, but it's not. <laughs> because they were all raising their hands. I recognize you, and I grew up in a, a church where we raised our hands to the Lord to give honor and glory to the Lord. And here I'm in this venue. No, they're not doing that. It's to the people on the stage. It's to men. Every single one of us want that glory. Your flesh desires it. And I, I challenge you to start searching your motives of why you do specific things in life. Because you're going to find out oftentimes the motive is not pure. It is to beget the respect of those around you. I need to be respected. I mean, we live in a generation of YouTube and, and Facebook where we get this idea. We got to post it on Facebook because you know what? Everybody wants to know what I think because I matter. It's deadly. This is, it's intoxicating. And here we see a man of God, anointed of God, God with him, falling victim to this very sin. But here's the problem. When you embrace pride, there are strings attached. There are strings attached. There's the natural order of events that is going to follow. And we see that right here. Here we read right at the beginning of verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. What's the next thing we read? And to the four, he transgressed against the Lord his God by entering into the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. The very next thing we read is he transgressed. Embrace pride and you will sin. It's inevitable. It's the natural law of pride. You will not avoid it. Pride comes before destruction. When I see a man pursuing pride, embracing pride, I don't need to be a prophet. I know his end. It is destruction. And he can go around and profess Yeshua and he can profess Jesus and he can look like a sold out Christian all he wants. And I know where you're going to be. I know where you're going. Not because I'm a prophet, because the Bible tells me so. God's word is true. It will not fail. Remember that when you're confronted with pride, his word will not fail. You embrace it, you're going down. And so here we see Uzziah who is intoxicated with vain glory. And here's another aspect of pride. Learn this. He now is entering into the temple, which is forbidden. He is transgressing. He's walking over the commandment of God. It's called rebellion. He is entering in rebellion. Rebellion is a manifestation of pride. This is what freaks me out so much about looking at today's progressive modern day Christianity. Not recognizing rebellion against God's holiness, against his commandments. It's pride. It's pride. I told you, it will wear a thousand different masks. It will come at you in different ways. And so Uzziah, who he goes into the temple, it's only for the Kohanim to go into, to offer incense in the holy place. And we pick it up here. So Azariah the Kohen went in after him, and with him were 80 priests of the Lord, valiant men. 
And they withstood King Uzziah and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziahu, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. You shall have no honor from the Lord God. One thing I can promise you, embrace pride, you will lose the honor of the Lord. Hey there, this is Mike at Corner Fringe Ministries. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked the video or it encouraged you, do us a favor. Hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the share. And if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. Now, if you want to watch the rest of this video, hit the button here. And if you want to watch the rest of this series, you can check it out here. And don't forget, you can download the Corner Fringe Ministries app today on any of your Play Stores. Thanks for joining us at Corner Fringe Ministries.